Chris and Audrey Yang. Reference C25 on all clear, Tooting Bit, Tooting Broadway southbound. Okay. Thank you very much. The new railway represents an entirely new departure in construction. Never before has a railway been built deep beneath the city streets without causing major disruption to the traffic in the thoroughfares above. This new method of tube construction is the way forward. It is the way in which all great cities will construct their railways in future. The opening of the City and South London Railway not only marks the success of a new method of construction, it also heralds the dawn of a new era in locomotion. Gone are the huge, cumbersome steam locomotives belching forth the acrid fumes that choke us in the tunnels of the Metropolitan Railway. From today we have a new form of power, a power which the world will look at and marvel. That power is electricity. This is the Northern Line, the oldest and the longest tube line in the world. But when you open up in the morning, you don't really stop and think about things like that. Well, when the line opened, there were only six stations, but they kept adding a bit here and a bit there, till it ran all the way from Clapham Common to Euston. Now, that last stretch of the line to Euston was opened in uh, 1907. That's the same year they opened the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway. The Hampstead Railway had the advantage that it was able to learn from the mistakes of the earlier line and was able to benefit from developing technology. It was one of the brighter, faster, more modern lines that opened shortly after the turn of the century. In time, almost all of the tube railways fell under the same control and plans were made to integrate the system. The city in South London was enlarged and reconstructed in the 1920s and at the same time it was connected with the Hampstead Railway to create the main body of what's now known as the Northern Line.
640 Gov. See him high banner. Yes, Gav Simpson, yeah. You won't be in today, you've been up all night sick. Okay then. Okay, keep running away. Okay then. Gav Gibson for the DCM's office, please. Yes, Mr. Gibson. Keep an eye on one of the ones you owe you. And Gav Simpson will go sick. One for one night, you win your ready to do for them. All of the trains are fitted with a pilot light that's used to indicate that the doors are closed properly. Without this light, the guard can't give the driver a signal to start. If there's a failure of either the pilot light or the bell, the train has to be taken out of service. There may be nothing wrong, but because there's no positive indication that all the doors are closed. It's obviously not safe to carry passengers until the fault's fixed. for Morden with an audible warning. 57 has been cancelled. I'll speak to the Kennington man and guard him turning the train at Kennington for the northbound city. When you get number two on the south uh, city, please. Detraining, reverse via the signings. I've got 144 running empty on the north and 57 cancelled. Thank you. Hello, SM Kennington. When you get number two on the southbound, will you detrain it please, reverse it via the sidings to cover a gap on the northbound city. And train number five, you've been diverted via Charing Cross branch, via the Charing Cross branch driver due to a signal failure in the back area. And finally, there's only one lifting service on the northern line at Chalk Farm. Michael Beach reporting. Hello, signal report centre. We've got a track down approaching Bank Northbound, affecting signal A656. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Northern Line Information Service. As a result of a signalling problem at London Bridge, there is a restricted northbound city service. The southbound city service is running normally at present. Customers may find it easier to use the northbound Charing Cross service. And, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not 
Yeah, what you have to do is get platform number one downstairs, Charing Cross branch to Euston, and change there for the southbound northern line down to Angel. Well, I thought it was City Side Hill. No, it's only the northbound that's restricted. Oh, the the south southbound's all right, yeah. Okay. Normal okay. service, yeah. Right on. Controller speaking, that's the signalman at Camden Town. Yeah. Yes, we've had a report, there's heavy congestion at Angel, and as we've got this defective train at London Bridge Northbound, we'll reverse train number 70 at Moorgate, south to north, to help clear the uh, crowd there. That's train number 70, reverse at Moorgate, southbound to northbound. Please. What we found when we got there was that the drinks can had blown down the tunnel and become wedged beneath a safety device. Now this device is linked in with the signal, so if anything goes wrong, the red light won't go out. So we had a signal that was showing two lights at the same time, and that's a sign that something's wrong. There was a lot of pressure pushing down on the can, about 60 pounds, and I couldn't remove it. So I called a signal engineer who did the job. any sympathy for them at all. I feel sorry for all the other travelers who have to subsidize these cheats. people's impression of driving a train is drawn from their experience with cars and in fact the two couldn't be more different. Uh, the driving cabs of modern day trains are filled with many and varied safety features. Safety is obviously of prime importance and every train is checked thoroughly on each occasion that it's prepared for service. It's particularly important on the Northern Line where the intensity of service coupled with the complexity of its routes is by far and away unequalled by any other tube line in the world. Tell me how I get to Victoria. Yes, go downstairs, take any train on the left and change its stockwell for the Victoria line. Sometimes things go wrong for various reasons. It's up to me to try and sort things out with a customer. But then that's what I'm paid for, that's my job.
We decided to have Meet the Manager sessions on the Northern Line basically to get a better understanding, a first-hand understanding of what people think about our services. It also helps, if, uh, of course, to get our point over to people um, so that they understand some of the reasons behind uh, things that happen on the line. People generally come up with their own complaints, the things that affect them, and this emphasis is very, very helpful to me because although I know the things that go wrong on the line, I don't always understand exactly the impact they have on people. So quite typically, for example, people tell me about times when they've been turned out of their train short of the destination. As a result of that, and complaints I received at Finchley, we actually drastically altered our practice in turning trains short on occasions. Also, my engineering colleagues find it very useful because that's the only chance they get to speak to people first-hand about the service that they offer them. where we're standing at the moment is part of the longest railway tunnel in the world, which is 17 miles long. This is only part of the Northern Line. If we go north to Kennington, the Northern Line splits off there and goes north by Charing Cross to Camden Town. When we reach Camden Town, it splits up again and goes north to Edgware and Barnet. At the moment, where we're standing, it's six miles this way to Morden and 11 miles north to Finchley. And 40 feet above us is London. Anybody know it's all the Northern Line in the tunnel? The present stock on the Northern Line is obviously getting old and it's quite a job maintaining it. We will be getting new stock in the next few years and it'll be quite an advance on what we're running now. Not just in design but also technically. We've seen the prototypes of the trains that have been evaluated by other lines and, of course, we'll be drawing on their experience with them. A man had committed a knife point robbery in the street. He ran into a tube station wielding a knife and went past the ticket barriers. This was picked up by the closed circuit television which was being monitored by the London Underground staff who then called the British Transport Police. The police then attended the station. They made a search of the station and the man was seen and after a short struggle was apprehended on one of the platforms. It's as simple as that. This section of the line has gone from one of the worst uh, to one of the best. Crime is down. They're no longer frightened to use it. The uniform officers are out. Um, both we've got both foot patrols and mobile patrols out uh, throughout the time the system's running. So obviously they're there to show the high presence to both staff and travelling public. Um, they're there obviously as a, a deterrent. We've got a lot of plainclothes officers who aren't necessarily seen by the general public. They used to target problem spots. The police officers that you normally see are the uniformed home beat officers. They patrol regularly, hold surgeries at their local stations, and have a much higher visual profile. 
I think the increased level of policing, coupled with security measures that London Underground have taken, such as the introduction of focal points, video surveillance and passenger help points, these have all helped to reduce crime considerably. A lot of the, the, the violent crimes, as I say, have dropped off now. I mean, we've, we've, we've got on top of that. But some of the silly things that we're still dealing with is graffiti. Um, the depots. Um, young youngsters still think it's um, good fun to spray trains. Um, not only is that time consuming for us, but it's also costly for London Underground to remove the graffiti. Um, but again, observations are kept on the depots and the trains, and we have had numerous arrests from the, uh, the youth and the younger generation causing the damage. In many ways, the Northern's a strange place to work. Our staff spend a lot of their lives working underneath London streets, even below the vaults of the Bank of England. And then again, moments later, they can pop out into the fresh air in rain, sun, snow, past people's gardens. The Northern Line originally started life as two completely separate railways, each serving different parts of London in a rather different way. Later on, they were joined together and extended, and one extension was even taken over an even older steam branch line, part of the Great Northern Railway, to serve the areas up to Barnet. The line wasn't ever designed as a complete project. It grew up from various schemes in the 19th century, which grew together to give today's railway. In its time, it brought to life the suburbs Edgware, Golders Green, Morden, and whole communities that have grown to depend on it. Like most old railways in the world, of course, today if we were starting from scratch we wouldn't make it quite like that. It would be rather nice to say, forget what we've got, let's start again. But of course we don't have that facility. Our job now is to take what we've got and make the most of it to overcome the problems.
one branch of the Northern Line, there's, branch, there's two branches. You see the City Branch and the Charing Cross Branch. Yeah, the Charing Cross Branch is the other branch. So you have to go, go via the Central Line to get onto the Cross Road. Tonight. Well, we've got some uh, floods in Holborn, um, which is affecting the Central Line and the Piccadilly Line, and uh, the closest station, I believe. And that means Tottenham Court Road, which is not far up the road. We're going to Information service. Following a signal problem earlier on this morning, I'm pleased to tell you that the service is now back to normal and you should have an easier journey home. However, passengers wishing to change for the Central or Piccadilly lines are advised that holding station is closed. This is due to a burst of water main. to Baker Street. Let the passengers off the train first, please. Let the passengers off the train first, please.
As far as most people are concerned, it's the end of the day. But for the Northern Line, it's just the start of another 24 hours.